Welcome to Smart Service 365. In this onboarding tutorial, we'll teach you the basics to get your site up and running. By the end of this video, you should have your company set up along with its basic business information, understand how to navigate 365 and some of its functions. So that way, on your call with your implementation specialist, you'll dig into some of the more powerful tools of 365. Let's go ahead and get you signed in. Your login credentials, as well as your company's URL, should have been sent to you via email. You can either click the link that was sent to you, or enter in your company's name followed by a period, then smartservice365.com. We'll use the fictitious company name of Diamond Aces HVAC. Once you've entered into your company's portal, you'll be prompted to enter in your credentials. Once signed in, you'll be brought to your home screen. From here, you can navigate to anywhere on your site. We're going to focus on the Administration tab and get your company's general default information set up. The information you're entering in now is just your default information, which can be changed or modified on a case-to-case -case basis depending on the customer or services you're providing. There are two easy ways to navigate to your administration page. The first is what we call the grid view, located here. Go to the icon that looks like a jigsaw puzzle piece. This is your administration icon. Once you select this, you'll be brought to your administration page, where you'll want to locate the subheading called Companies. A second route to your administration page is by simply locating the administration icon in the lower icon bar, which will be visible from every page on our site. So once you're on the administration page, go ahead and click on that company subheading. This is the company's page. The great thing about 365 is that you can use this platform for multiple companies. So if you have several companies or divisions within your company, you can streamline your work by having all of your distributors and customer lists all in one place. So any companies you have will be displayed on this page. When you want to add a company, simply scroll over to this blue add sign. You'll become familiar with this button as it's used throughout Smart Service when you want to add something new to your site. Click on the add button. This is where we'll want to enter in your company's basic information. In the first field, enter in your company's legal business name. Then, if you're doing business as, you can enter that name in the DBA section. Next, you'll want to enter in your company's EIN, or tax ID number. Then when you scroll down, you can see where you can enter in your company's logo. Either drag an image into the box, or click and browse to upload a file. Once it's loaded, you can see a preview of it in the window. The following section will be entering in your company's physical location details. As you start entering in your business's location, Google Maps will auto-suggest a mailing address. If there is more than one suggestion, be sure that you have the correct mailing address and location of your business. Next is the contact section. This is the information that's on all of your outbounding customer-facing documents. Things like quotes, invoices, and work orders all retrieve your company's basic information from this section. Here you can enter in your company's primary phone number, as well as the toll-free, fax, or mobile phone option, followed by your company's website. In the email section, you'll want to place an email address that you use to field incoming messages from customers and distributors alike. Note, this email address may be different than the one you set up with system settings, as that email is designed for all outgoing and often non-reply email. If you haven't already set up that information on your system settings, you can do that on your call with your implementation specialist, or you can find out how to do it yourself in our system settings email tutorial. Now scroll down to the next section called customer defaults. In many businesses, these variables can change from customer to customer. What you're setting up here is what your site defaults to. If there are any variables that stay consistent throughout your company, say sales tax, you'll want to enter in those defaults here to save you time. Let's go through each field so you understand the terms that we're using. In the Sales Tax drop menu, you can enter in your state, county, or city taxes that would be applicable, or you can add a customized tax rate by clicking the Add button. For this example, we're going to leave it as non-taxable. The next field is Sales Rep. Once you create your company's employee list, you'll be able to select a sales rep that's managing the account. 
If your company does not use a sales team, that's okay to leave it blank. The next field, source, you're able to monitor where you're getting most of your leads from, whether that's through email, referral, Google, or another source, which you can add by clicking the Add button. The Terms section often varies from company to company and customer to customer. The option you set here will be the default, however, you'll be able to modify it case to case. You'll see that we've already suggested some of the more common payment terms, like cash on delivery, due upon receipt, and your net 10 through 60. Or you can click the Add button to create your own set of terms. For this example, we're going to select Due Upon Receipt. Now the next section is Payment Method. These are the ways that your company receives or processes payment. We've already created the common fields for you with check, cash, and the most frequently used debit and credit cards. But again, if you want to add your own payment method, you can click the Add button. The final default that we will set is your company's delivery method. The delivery method is the way that you send important documents like your invoices or quotes to your customers. We've already provided for you four options, in text, email, printed form, which can be used in standard mail or handed out in person, and the non-applicable. Now when you scroll down to the next section, you'll see three areas in quote configuration, work order configuration, and invoice configuration. What you'll be creating is a template for a PDF version of your quotes, work orders, and invoices, which can then be attached to emails or printed. In terms of setup, these three areas are virtually the same, so we are just going to focus on the quote configuration, but the same process will apply for all three configuration settings. So, when we click on quote configuration, you'll see these fields. The first is your next quote number. If your company already has a way of tracking your quote numbers, you can enter a sequence of numbers here to remain consistent with your records. However, if you're starting off fresh, just leave the auto-suggested one we've created for you. The next section, Email Text Template, is where you can access and create your company's auto-generated emails and text messages. If you have standard language that you use in your quotes, work orders, and invoices, you'll want to create those templates here. You can start a new email or text template by clicking the Add button. Then, create a short description of the message. Next, add a subject. This is what appears in the subject line of an email. And then finally, add your message. This will be the body of the email or the text message. Then, be sure to click Save. Once you've clicked Save, be sure that your newly created message appears in the list of templates. Then, select the one that applies to the configuration that you're creating. The next two sections deal with the color of the PDF. The background and the foreground colors that we use to generate those PDFs are based on universal colors used in web and graphic design. Now we don't expect everyone to know those colors, so we've created this shortcut to this color chart. Click on it and find the colors that best represent your company. Then, when you return back to the configuration page, enter in the colors that you wish to use here. Once you have your colors set, you'll scroll down to the Terms and Conditions section. If your quotes, work orders, and invoices have any special terms, conditions, or policies, you'll want to enter those in here. Global Signature is just the way that you sign your documents. Then, you can repeat the process with your work orders and your invoices. Once you have all three configurations set, click Save, and your company has been created on Smart Service 365. If by chance there was something in this tutorial that you were unable to finish, or simply had a question about, be sure to bring it up in your call with your implementation specialist. Thanks for choosing Smart Service 365.